Hello, hello everyone. Simon Jacobson here for another episode of Biblical Characters Decoded. Lessons for life. Today we will be discussing Abraham, the first pioneer. This program is dedicated by uh, Derek in honor of his father, John Eggert Mortland. I have asked this question to so many people, and I'd like to ask you this question. Do you consider yourself a conformist? Very few people on earth like to be called a conformist, and most people will answer, no, I'm not a conformist. However, the fact of the matter is that most of us are conformists. Simply, first of all, human nature is such that we want to fit in. We want to please, even as young children in our homes or families, we want to make sure we are uh, in line. And we're reminded time and again if we try to go out of line. <clears throat> so the first tendency is to be a conformist. Secondly, the social structures of the world are such that they demand conformity, whether you're going to work or that you want to belong to a country club, or you want to belong to any clique, to any particular group, whether it's um, a child's children for sure, as I said, but uh, even teenagers, adults. The question is, is that natural to us to be conformist or not? Or do we have something original about us that often is beat out of us and we don't really learn to sing our own song? So let me take this from now, approach it from another angle. As I grew up, and I grew up in a religious community, I was always convinced that religion was about conformity. And not necessarily in a negative way. You know, community, family, rules, rituals, traditions. And to keep it together, and I'm talking even a healthy situation, you need a certain element of people going along. I mean, in any country, any, any society, in any group, if people rebel and everyone's going to their own tune, you won't have the cooperation necessary. Now, the, dice, the downside of it, of course, is when it turns into a lack of annihilation of our individuality and of our uniqueness. And if it silences us, that can become dangerous even. Look at totalitarian regimes where they insist that everybody just follow a certain path, and that's that, at the expense of our own voice. So we need to have some type of balance. But then I discovered something that really changed my entire attitude. I began reading and thinking about Abraham. Abraham, yes, not Abraham Lincoln, but Abraham from the Bible. Now, he's like the founder of monotheism. He discovered God. Now, what kind of life did he have? Was he a conformist? The exact opposite. He actually was the first pioneer. He challenged the status quo at great expense to himself because he was see seen as a threat to the establishment, to the powers that be. He went against the tide, a true trailblazer. The first and maybe the greatest pioneer of them all. Because he had no one to turn to. There were no synagogues. There were no houses of worship. He was living in a pagan world where idol worship was the standard. And he defied his parents, his community, his king, his nation, his society. Just think of the strength that one needs to do that. You're talking about pioneer. For us, even being what they call out of the box and being a trailblazer, so today we also have a category called trailblazers. Whether they call them um, innovators, influencers, early adopters. But he had no one to turn to. And I realized if he's the father of faith, of monotheism, of religion, he was the ultimate nonconformist. He was coming into a material world where people live the life of dog eats dog, survival of the fittest, even though that term may have not been coined at the time. 
And he defied all of that. What does that tell you? That tells you that religion is very different than what we think it is. That's what it began to say to me. That perhaps the whole conformity was really part of, I don't want to call it brainwashing or mind control, but part of something that developed over the years, and part of it is mind control, that was necessary to keep the community together. But in essence, it's actually about going beyond, it's about transcendence. I'll be going beyond the norms, beyond the group and herd and herd mentality, and to think really out of the box. Over the years, that too became established and became laws and rules. But what about the very laws and rules themselves? Are they conformity driven or are they free spirited driven? So let's use music as an example. Musical notes are structure. There are only that many musical notes on the scale. There are only that many keys on a piano. There are only that many strings on another instrument. The same with every musical instrument. And yet, what it produces is not in any way bound to a particular structure. It produces tremendous, tremendous effect on us in transporting us to another time and place. Music does. The magic of music. So you see that structure doesn't necessarily mean conformity. Structure means you're following certain guidelines in order to go beyond structure. And that's what Abraham was really all about. Unfortunately, it took on the shape of some as being only structure and losing the magic, losing the music, losing the song. And that's where individuality and, and, and cooperation come together. The cooperation is synergy. It was never meant to be squashing or eliminating or annihilating individuality. It was meant to create the synergy that only indiv many individuals can create together, like music. But it was never meant to eliminate the individuality. It's a perfect balance between harmony within diversity. And that's what Abraham taught. So when you think about it, we have either two extremes. Either you become this free spirit, I do whatever I want, I beat, I go to my own, I sing to my own song, beat my... It, 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 play to my own drum, to my own drum, whatever this, the expression is, beat to my own drum, pure individuality, or the other extreme, conformity. Don't make trouble, fit in, the herd mentality. The truth is, it's neither of the two. It's really utter spir free-spiritedness, but not free-spiritedness at the expense of the synergy, but complementing each other. So when you think about it, we each truly are pioneers and can be pioneers. You are born an original, don't become a copy. You have a song to sing, many songs to sing. Don't allow it to be drowned out by the pressures and demands of others. Because a healthy environment, a healthy family, healthy parents won't insist that you do it their way. They'll help cultivate and nourish, nourish and nurture your individuality and yet at the same time, a healthy individuality does not need to run away from working with others. Many people who seem to be bohemians and these free spirits, it may just be fear, fear of commitment, fear of staying in one place for too long. But a true healthy individuality is going to actually look to cooperate with others, to cross-pollinate, to synergize. And that's the key thing to remember. So I'd like to share with you is this. You have something original, more than one thing, unique and original and indispensable about you. And very often it's silenced and not allowed <clears throat> to express itself. What we learn from Abraham is that you can truly be a pioneer. It needs courage. It needs strength. You need others that support that. But above all, you need to believe in yourself. And what drove Abraham was ultimately, and this is the key, a certain certainty, an absolute certainty of a thing of value, of ideas that he believed in. So here's the suggestion. More than a suggestion, this can be a difference between life and death. Find something you absolutely believe in, that you're ready to fight for no matter what. And that's what you build upon. As long as you don't have that, then it's going to be very easy to become wavering because it's optional, it's arbitrary. Maybe I believe in this, maybe I don't. I meet somebody else. Oh, I like what they say. 
So it's critical to find that inner center, that inner voice within that you know for sure is absolute. And if you don't have that yet, talk to friends, find a mentor, find others, discuss it. What you want to do is find that focal point, that, that vortex that becomes the foundation, and that you build upon. And you know that for sure, then you figure out how can I access and how can, how can I access and how can I actualize that? And there, you will need at times to really be forceful and firm in what you believe. This doesn't mean you have to be offensive. This doesn't mean you have to be, um, uh, to, to be audacious in the sense of hurting others. You do need audacity. You need to dare, but you don't have to step on others. And, 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 and indeed, you find ways to actually find people who can complement what you do. That's the true pioneer. Steve Jobs is the one that said, only those that are crazy enough to believe they can change the world are the ones that do. Yes, we need to be crazy enough to do that. But as we know in his life, he wasn't such an easy person. We need to have that drive, but also the humility to know that you're fulfilling a cause that's greater than yourself. It's not just your self-actualization. And that's where the words of Hillel come into play. If I'm only for, if no, if I'm not, if I will not be for me, who will be for me? If I'm not for myself, who will be for me? And if I'm only for myself, what am I? And it seems like a contradiction. No, it's not. Because both are necessary. You have to begin, what is it you stand for? And then you recognize it's not about me, it's about a cause greater than I am. And that's why your individuality is so necessary. And then you say, if I'm only for myself, what am I? There are others, an orchestra. Everyone playing this magical music, we need each other. Musical notes need each other. Not because they don't have their individuality, it's because it makes the synergy far greater. And that's where the two come together. And the third expression, finally, from Hillel, where he says, and if not now, when? Because this is no time to procrastinate. Now is the time. Now is the time for you to shine, for you to rise to the occasion and be your real self. The true pioneer, the trailblazer, the one that has something to contribute that no one else can contribute but you. And that's the key thing to remember. And life then becomes well worth it because you're not just following someone else's script. You're following yours, that voice. And while at the same time learning how to synergize and harmonize with everyone around you, a synchronicity of a true harmony within diversity. This is what we learn from the first pioneer. And this is the ultimate real experience of True, I don't, I don't like the word religion altogether because it's associated with so much of this conformity, which, as I said, has positive sides to it, but it also has some negative sides and many that have been abused. But really the idea of spirituality, being a free spirit, being able to really experience true transcendence and being a pioneer in the transcendence of not allowing ourselves to succumb to our material desires and indulgences, not to be seduced, by all the distractions of this physical world, but to recognize that it's your soul that drives you, that's the ultimate pioneering experience. Because that frees you, and frees you even from your very ego. That's the key. And as you get to that place, you'll see a person who has that is the person that will co coexist with everyone around them. They don't have, it does not have to be selfish or arrogant at all. On the contrary, it's coming from tremendous strength, but also from tremendous humility. So be the pioneer you should be. Go for it. Find others that can do that. This is what I believe is the mission of my life, of the Meaningful Life Center, is to help you find that voice, to help you find that mission, that mission statement that's unique to you, to help you find that significance and that ability to pioneer and, and, and forge a path that nobody has forged before, the road less traveled or the road never traveled on before because it's your particular road. Thank you so much. This has been Simon Jacobson, Meaningful Life Center, MeaningfulLife.com. Please go to MeaningfulLife.com and you'll find a robust schedule of events and programs that address issues like this. If you like some of the words that I've said, please share, comment, feedback, because at the end of the day, it is a synergy between all of us. Thank you so much and be blessed.